Hello everyone, my name is Courtney Pollack and I'm the Customer Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Payment Processing Shakeup, Is Your Acumatica System Ready? Presented by Jeff Cox. Before we get started, I wanna go over a couple housekeeping items. Everyone has been placed on mute, keep the background noise to a minimum. However, throughout the webinar, you can submit any questions you have. If you'd like to submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar, and we'll answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We're also recording this presentation, and it will be available to you tomorrow afternoon, as well as available on our YouTube channel. You can also download a copy of the presentation in the handout section of your GoToWebinar. And finally, we've got a couple polls during the session, so we would appreciate your participation in those and our closing survey. With that said, we're thrilled that you've taken some time out of your busy day to be with us on this session. SWK is always here to help you fulfill your vision of a smarter and easier way to run your business by providing the tools, support, software, and industry knowledge whenever you need it. So whether you're here to explore a new solution or here to find out what it's all about with this authorized.net sunset, don't hesitate to ask any questions you have throughout the session. And as a quick reminder, SDBK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So check us out and give us a follow on Twitter slash X, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube so you don't miss out. Okay, that's enough for me. Let's hand it over to Jeff for the main event. Awesome. Thank you, Courtney. And it doesn't matter how many times you run through it, things always don't seem to work when it's showtime. So give me just a second. The slides don't want to move. Gotta love technology. Yeah. All right. Here we go. There we Let's go. see if that will work. So uh, I'm Jeff Cox. I am uh, representing Acumatica Payments today. So we're going to dive into a few different uh, features and functionality of, of Acumatica payments, and uh, also talk about um, the authorized.net sunset, which Courtney mentioned. Um, I believe a lot of you are being affected by that, so we'll talk about what that means and what the options are. Um, first, I just wanted to, to jump in and give a little background. Um, some ways that I came up with, some ways to improve your payments process. And then we'll talk about you know, benefits of integrating your payments with Acumatica. Some of you may have that integrated today. Um, some of you may be using separate outside systems that are not connected to Acumatica. Um, so I'll, I'll start just by briefly going down my, my six items there. So one, consolidate payment vendors. So if you're accepting payments, let's say uh, via your website, you might have an in-store presence and a point of sale or payment terminals. You might be integrated today with Acumatica and you accept payments on your orders and invoices. Um, potentially you have multiple payment processors that are, are running those different systems. And there's, a cost, there's costs associated with each of those. Um, it is recommended to consolidate those into one um, that can support all of your, your payment channels. Uh, maximize your sales channels. Give your customers the ability to pay any way or anywhere that they would like to pay you. Um, it's increasing your sales. Embrace credit cards. Of course, I'm going to say that because I'm, I'm the credit card guy, but embrace credit cards. Um, credit cards is a means whereby you can get paid faster. So next day funding, um, two business days at the most, um, get, get paid faster uh, with, with accepting credit cards. And now with the, with the surcharging feature where you can apply um, a fee on the credit card sale, um, you're essentially, it's, it's no additional cost to you to accept credit cards. Integrate your payment data with Acumatica. I'll, I'll dive into that a little further. Stay PCI compliant. So PCI compliance is um, payment card industry. That's keeping the cardholder data, your customer's credit card data secure. And then finally, understanding cost versus product and service fees. So there is a cost associated with processing credit cards that the card brands, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, they set, they charge to all credit card processors. 
And then there's product and service fees that are charged on top of, of costs. So just be aware of those, understand those, work with your, your advisor, your sales rep on what those are and how to reduce those. So what are the benefits of, of integrating your payment acceptance with Acumatica? Um, you can automate payments made on your sales orders and your invoices. Uh, you can uh, provide additional means for your customers to pay, like click to pay links and uh, customer portal. You're eliminating the inaccuracy of manual data entry. So no longer do you need to you know, collect a payment via a payment terminal, terminal or a virtual terminal and then update the uh, GL and Acumatica or update invoices. When you're integrated, it's all done automatically. You're giving you, um, you have a way to secure your cardholder data um, and it's not stored within Acumatic, it's stored behind a, a PCI compliant secure vault. And then again, like I mentioned, um, accepting credit cards reduces days of sales outstanding, getting paid faster and giving your customers multiple ways to pay. So with that, we'll jump into a poll question. Yes, so before we dive any deeper, uh, we just want to ask a quick poll. So, how do you accept credit card payments today? Um, are you not accepting credit cards, but you're attending the session because you're interested in starting? Um, is that something you do through your website, payment invoices, in person through terminals, or a little bit of everything of the above? And you know, Jeff, I always love to see these poll results come in in real time. That's, cool. That's really cool. <laughs> right now, it looks like payment on invoices and a combination of the above is leading the way. Not surprising there. That's great. <laughs> okay, we're going to leave this open for just a couple seconds. So if you haven't made up your mind yet, and then um, I'll share this for everyone to see. Okay. So, you know, as probably expected, our leader with 70% is a combination of the above. Um, and then, you know, a close following by payment on invoices. But we do have a couple of people out there, you know, just mostly in person through terminals or on their website. Yeah. Great. So uh, I, my takeaway from that is a lot of uh, B2B businesses um, that are are on today which is what I would uh, what I would expect maybe a less of an in-person presence um, and a little bit of, of e-commerce presence and that's that's all good so let's talk about Acumatica payments and some of the key features um, I've highlighted on the screen I'm not gonna just for for sake of time I won't go through each one of these but essentially your Acumatica payments, account will give you the ability to accept credit and debit cards, ACH, and gift cards. And, and maybe for this audience, gift cards is, is uh, potentially not a big feature, but um, it, is, uh, uh, it is for some. Um, the one that I'm really excited about is the second one, which is compliant surcharging, which is a brand new feature uh, that is just released. And we call it compliant surcharging because there are rules that Visa and MasterCard um, have in place um, when you are adding a surcharge to a customer that is paying by credit card. So for example, there are still certain states that do not allow you to surcharge credit card payments. And so our system will look for any customers in those states and remove the surcharge automatically. Um, you are not allowed to surcharge a debit card. So we, we do a, um, what we call a bin lookup, which is the first six digits of the cardholder data that tells us what type of card it is and who the card issuing bank is so that we know if it's a debit card, we remove the, the surcharge. So just a couple of cool features that are included with surcharging. Um, Surcharging is available today. It's, it's a beta product, so it's available as a customization in Acumatica, um, but um, it's a really cool feature. It will be available in the core product of 2025 R1. 
Um, continuing with some additional features, payment links and the Acumatica payment portal. So you have the ability to create payment links in Acumatica for your sales orders and invoices. Um, email those links to the customer. They click on the link, which pops open a web browser, and they can click on each of the invoices that they want to pay. They can pay all of the invoices. They can pay some of the invoices. They can pay partial amounts on the invoices if you allow them to, to pay partial amounts, or you can require the full amount. And then you have the Acumatica Payments Portal, which is um, a subset or basic version of the Acumatica Customer Portal. And uh, the Payments Portal um, allows them to save their payment type so they can save multiple credit cards for future use. They can save bank accounts for future use, and then they can choose the invoices that they want to pay. Um, we do have um, multiple credit card terminals. So these are in-person terminals um, that are connected with Acumatica. So if you do have a storefront or a face-to-face -face presence and you require a payment terminal, maybe you don't need a full-blown point of sale, although that is an option, um, you can use a payment terminal that is connected to Acumatica. Um, let's say you've got customers that you want to restrict payment types. So you've got your a, a large ticket item. You don't necessarily want every customer to pay by credit card. Um, so you want to restrict certain customers to only pay with ACH, which is generally less expensive than a credit card. You can use the customer class feature of Acumatica to say these customers can only pay by ACH. Um, these customers can pay by both ACH or credit card. So when they um, use the uh, customer portal, payments portal, or the payment links, they only have the option to use the payment type that you specify. Um, a couple of other things on here um, that I wanted to mention is um, recurring payments, which is always a, a, a cool feature where you can um, basically kind of the set it and forget it mode um, where you've got recurring invoices and you apply a payment to them. And then the big one for B2B customers like yourself, um, the last bullet on the right hand side, um, we are automating level two and level three commercial card requirements. Um, uh, this is adding invoice line item detail to the order. Um, it is done kind of in the background. It's pulling data from Acumatica. It's also applying default data on the payment gateway so that your uh, payment transactions are qualifying at the lowest cost for uh, commercial card data. Um, so that's, that's a, obviously when you're uh, looking to lower costs of accepting payments, that's a big one. Okay, why would you want to choose Acumatica Payments? There's multiple payment options out there. There's different ISVs that have um, integrated payments with Acumatica. Um, the reason why Acumatica Payments is ideal is that it's developed by Acumatica. It is included in the core product beginning in version 2023 R2. You have Acumatica Payments that is um, all it needs to be is a, a checkbox enabled and then your gateway API keys plugged in and you're off and running. So there's no customization um, to install and you have access to future updates as quickly as Acumatica puts them out. Um, they are available for you to use. So there's no waiting on third parties um, for updates to come out. We've got different uh, commerce options for e-commerce, different point of sale options the Acumatica mobile app, and then I mentioned previously the Acumatica payments portal integration. Um, Authorize.net was the original native feature. And uh, so let's, let's talk about that now because it is a planned deprecation. So it will not be available beginning in 2025 R1. So if you have plans to upgrade to 2025 R1 and you're using Authorize.net as your payment gateway integrated with Acumatica today, you want to make sure that you're starting to plan now um, a different option for um, taking payments. And um, of course, I'm going to recommend Acumatica payments to you. So 
Um, you can stay on an old version. That is an option. You can certainly stay on an old version. Authorized.net will still continue to work and um, it will still be active in those old versions. Um, and you know, it, it, is, it will be status quo in old versions. That's not ideal, of course. You wanna make sure that you're upgrading to newer versions. You wanna make sure that you're getting new functionality releases as they come out. And I think the biggest thing is, is making sure that you're getting security updates um, by making sure that you're on a, a current an active version. So again, stay on an old version, not ideal. Authorized.net would still work. We, we absolutely recommend that you do upgrade, you take advantage of, of updates and um, upgrade to 2025 R1 when that is ready. But if you are using Authorized.net, make sure that you have a plan to migrate to a different payments option uh, for before you upgrade because it will not that that um, checkbox, that um, functionality will not be available beginning in R1 and then later releases. So um, if you are, this is the perfect time um, to ramp up with, um, if you're using authorized.net today, we've got, you know, we've got plenty of time. We've got seven months. Um, so that's, that's plenty of time to start planning and talking to the Acumatic Payments team. I wanted to run through just quickly some of the roadmap features because I, th I think this is in, um, important, especially some of these um, in the poll question, there were some e-commerce customers out there. So we wanna make sure that we've covered the e-commerce platforms that you're potentially using. Um, the first one there is the, the surcharge method. I talked about that. It's available today. It's really cool. Um, customers are, are, are loving it. Um, we've got a lot of beta users on it today and we're adding more every day. So, so jump in with that and, um, and make sure you take advantage of that. Um, we have the, the Acumatica Field Services app. We're adding a mobile card reader to that. That should be launched within the next uh, 30 days um, so that you can, today it is a manual process to add a credit card um, through the uh, field services app. Um, we will be including a Bluetooth device that works with a smartphone so that you can tap or insert a card in the field. Um, capture more than pre-authorized, that's, that's been a big uh, customer request, so that that's in development now. Um, the, and then the um, e-commerce connectors and platforms, I'll take a minute and talk about those. We finished development on the Shopify integration. Um, this is specific to Acumatica users. If you're, if you're using Shopify today, you know that Shopify is really Shopify payments. They, they push customers to their own uh, payments company. Um, however, um, Acumatica has a very good relationship with Shopify and they're allowing Acumatica users to bypass some of the additional fees associated with Shopify. Um, so that is in beta right now and should be in, um, uh, available in the next 30 days. The big commerce integration is expected to be completed in November and available for release at the end of, of December. So those are the two major uh, e-commerce platforms that we find Acumatica customers are using. Uh, we also have other integrations like um, WooCommerce is a big one as well that we also have integrations. Those are that one is ready today. Um, some invoice notification features, so notifying customers, hey, you've got a you've got an invoice that is due coming up um, in five days, or hey, customer, you've got an invoice that's due today. Here's the link. Please make a payment or a kind notification, hey, you've got your invoice was due yesterday, we noticed you missed a payment. Um, here's the link again to, to make that payment. So just some notifications. Um, Acumatica Payments is available today in the United States and Canada, and will be expanding internationally into other regions. Um, I don't have a time frame on those, but we are looking to expand um, into um, other international regions where Acumatica has a presence. And then some additional features there, just um, functionality we have today that, that will um, be expanding the, uh, 
um, the value of those those different uh, with token migration. So this this is you you save credit card data today inside of Acumatica or with an existing merchant processor. Uh, we can take those those tokens or that card data and we can um, upload it into our gateway and apply it to your new merchant account. That's a that's a big feature that a lot of customers utilize. Um, gift card acceptance acceptance is available today. We're just expanding on some of the functionality of that. Adding additional ACH reporting updates inside of Acumatica, and then really um, providing some better printing of receipts for your customers. From this, that's more for the in person um, in person payments. All right, so just a, a couple of screenshots that I wanted to share and show with you. Um, so you have the ability to you, you create the sales order, you create an invoice inside of Acumatica. You can take a payment right there. So if you've got a payment saved on file, you can you can absolutely authorize it, capture the payment right there inside of Acumatica without sending a payment link. That's that's one option. This um, particular screen on the right hand side shows you what the payment link looks like. I mentioned that you can you can give them uh, a view that shows multiple invoices that are open. They can click on the little checkbox to pay the ones that they want to pay, and it will um, sum the total on the right hand side. They you can also give them the ability to partial pay. That, that's an option as well. So they can alter the amount that they want to pay. Um, and then it will just keep that invoice open and then they'll have to continue to make payments on that invoice. Or you can, you just say, no, all my customers must pay the, the full amount. So that's what the, the customer, uh, excuse me, the payment link looks like. So here's the, um, the payments portal. Um, just a, a quick screenshot again of that. It also gives them the ability to select the invoices that they want to pay. Um, the difference of the payments portal and click to pay link is the click to pay link is just that it's a link you send to your customer. They click on the link, it opens a web browser, and then they click off the invoices that they want to pay. The customer payments portal requires them to log in and see their invoices and make a payment. So the biggest distinction is one is just a link they click on. One requires them to log in and make payments. The, the biggest reason for that is because here inside the payments portal, they can save their payment type. So you'll see at the top where it has a payment method and the currency that is uh, where they can, can edit, they can add new payment cards or bank accounts for future, uh, future payments. All right, real quickly, uh, this is just walking through the, the setup. I won't, I won't spend a, a lot of time on this, but I will say that it's, it's super easy. Um, I've done it a few times for customers. So, and, and I know a lot of you probably don't know me, but I'm not a super uh, technical or, or in-depth person when it comes to um, diving into to Acumatica, but I was able to do it. So I just wanted to point that out that it's really easy. It does take, I would say, 15 minutes or so. Um, all of you are, are Acumatica savvy, or, or I'm, I'm guessing most of you, so wouldn't take you very long to set this up. So all you need is the, um, you'll see on the bottom left-hand side, that's the API key, hash key. Those are gateway credentials. Once you have those, the, the, the setup is very easy. We typically do a setup in your test environment first and allow you to um, go through different um, payment scenarios and, and um, get your team um, confident in using it. And then we um, have it installed in your production environment when you're ready to go live. Okay. Um, we've talked about Acumatica. We've talked about um, the, the functionality and what, um, what it does. Um, I just wanted to quickly run through a couple things and talk about merchant services. 
So what that is, is, is you need a merchant account from Acumatica payments in order to process inside of your Acumatica. So what we do is we, we work very closely with uh, the account management team at SWK. So reach out to your account manager, tell them you're interested in Acumatica payments and they'll start the process with us. We'll assign that to one of our Acumatica payments uh, sales team members and they'll schedule a discovery call with you. Um, they'll talk about your business, how you take payments today. Um, we'll, we'll review some of your, your previous um, statements with your current processor. Um, that provides a lot of information about your business, the types of cards you accept, like, you know, are you mostly debit cards? Are you mostly um, commercial cards? Do you, are you face-to-face? -face? We, can, we can tell by looking at those if there's retail transactions. Um, so there's a lot of information that we can deem from those customer statements or from the merchant statements. We'll talk about the entire process with you, what the application process looks like. Um, and I'll show you that on the, the next screen, but we have a, a really quick, really cool digital application process um, we call click to enroll. Um, that one is about a 10 to 15 minute process with a few questions um, and then walk you through that setup. If you need to migrate tokens from a previous processor, we, we um, get you with the team um, to help you do that. Um, Acumatic has written a really nice tool that uh, pulls that data from the gateway and applies it to your customers in Acumatica. Um, we work with you on timing of your launch, when your go live is. Again, we'll help you with the, the install in your sandbox, in your production, um, um, anything that you need along the way, additional training questions will assist you in that process. Um, secure fast sign up. So most of our customers, 92% approved by noon the next business day, you know, as long as all the documentation is there, um, it, it's a really quick and easy setup. We send you instructions on how to get your, your API keys, which I mentioned in the, the setup screen that you'll need. We've got simple competitive rates, work with your salesperson, um, let them know your needs. They're gonna they're gonna make sure that you're saving money. Um, Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, uh, they're gonna make sure that that you're saving money. It, it, this this is this is a value um, that we believe in, and we want to make sure that that you're saving money at the same time. Next day funding is available on your credit card sales. You've got a dedicated team from Acumatica Payments um, to assist you along the way. From, from the sales process all the way through to implementation, training, and support. Um, all of your reporting is available inside of, of Acumatica. And so it's pulling in your, um, your, your batches and information and providing reporting into you in Acumatica. The gateway also has different reporting options that uh, is available to you as well. Um, click to enroll. I, I, I won't spend a lot of time on this. Asking about you as the as a as the business signer, asking about your business, and then um, some the the terms and the pricing that was agreed upon with your sales rep. So you'll be able to review that. You agree and submit, and it goes right to our in-house underwriting team, and um, again approved very quickly. All right, looks like that is the end. I know we've we've run through a lot of this um, super quick, so um, let's let's uh, make sure you get your your questions in so that we can cover those now. Yes, Jeff, we've had a lot of great questions come in. So um, this is your last moment or throughout the Q and A to get those questions in if you haven't done so yet, and we'll dive in in just a second. And before we dive into Q&A and while you're getting those questions in, we just want to go ahead and ask, you know, what are your next steps at this moment? Um, do you want to learn more about Acumatic Payments? Um, would you like to have your SWK rep to reach out and discuss with you how Authorize.net um, Sunset affects you? Or are you still, you know, you're just here learning and getting in all the information? 
I'm gonna leave this open for just a few more seconds and then we'll dive in. Okay, let's dive into these questions. So, if you, and if you didn't have a chance to let us know in that poll or you're a little bit undecided, you can always let us know in the post-webinar survey um, if you would like to, you know, learn a little bit more. So, Jeff, we've got a lot of great questions. Some of these questions, you know, as expected, are a bit complicated and in-depth, so we'll do our best to answer everything we can. Um, but some of these, you know, just might require an offline conversation. So if that's the case and we get to your question and it's not perfectly answered, um, you know, just let us know and we'll reach out. The first thing I want to ask, um, Jeff, you know, is will I need to switch payment processors to use Acumatic Payments? Yeah, that's a good question. And the, the, the short answer for that is yes. Um, Acumatic Payments um, will be the payment processor, so you will need to replace who you use today. The, okay. the, the long answer, maybe, um, I'll just, I'll, I'll put it out there, is there are some industries where we are not compatible, um, and so there is a potential option to retain your current processor. Um, and, and the biggest one I'll just, is the cannabis industry. Um, there are only a few processors that will do that industry right now. So um, I would say if you're in that industry, reach out to me and we can discuss the options. Okay, great to know. Um, this one's a bit specific, so uh, we're, bear with me as I get through it. But um, if a customer service rep wants to take a payment from a customer while on a phone call, is there a service option that enables the rep to send the customer a pay link that captures a secure payment, or would that require another third party for that? Um, so inside Acumatica, you do have the ability to send the payment link out, um, and you could do that when you have a customer on the phone. And you can capture that payment, you know, as soon as they, as soon as the customer receives it, makes the payment, it will pull the payment back in. Perfect. If that was your question and you want to kind of dive a little deeper into that process, uh, let us know um, that you'd like to be followed up with and yeah. we will have your SWK rep reach out. Yeah, I would just, I would follow up with that too, Courtney. Um, let us, mm -hmm. let us know, um, you know, follow up with your account manager. We'll schedule a call. We can go through a demo with anybody that's live and you can, ask very specific process questions with us um you know that way there's no no question that um that, that's left open perfect um this is another one uh, that might be a little bit you know need an offline conversation but is acumatica itself going to be the payment processor or will it be on another payment processor um, this person, you know, likes the features coming, but they currently have, um, they're on a different system. Um, is Acumatica going to be the payment processor? So Acumatica um, utilizes a, a payment processor that provides the payment gateway and the merchant account, and Acumatica is the um face or sales engine of acumatica payments so the service the gateway is provided by a company called fortis and it is their payment gateway and their underwriters okay Hope that answers the question perfect we'll keep we've got questions coming so we're just going to sure. keep going yeah. um this person is using off.net right now and they have monthly fees um, through their mer merchant processing um, of things like Chase and Amex. They wanna know if they would still incur those monthly fees um, if they started using Acumatic payments. Um, 
You, it depends. I, I would say you would have a small monthly fee um, with Acumatica payments potentially. Um, the way that our pricing is done, um, we, it's based on your monthly volume. Um, so it depends on your, your, the volume that you process each month. And we have, we, if, if monthly fees are an issue, we'll waive monthly fees. We, we don't ever want this to be a, you know, an inhibitor at all because, um, you know, we, we, we want you as a customer on Acumatica payments. So if that's, if that's an issue, let us look at it and, and we'll, we'll make it work. But, okay. but we would, again, back to the first question, we would be replacing Chase or, you know, obviously authorized.net, we would be replacing or any other payment processor. So you would not have those fees any longer once you switch to us. But you would have, you know, your merchant account fees with Acumatica payments. Awesome. Um, this question may be a little bit more on the Acumatica side, so we'll see if we're able to answer it. Um, is payment portal different from the customer portal slash vendor portal? Yes. Yes. Um, so there is the customer portal, the Acumatica customer portal, um, and then there's a uh, payments portal, which is a basic version of the customer portal. So, and it only includes payments features. There's, there's, you know, again, it's kind of a basic version of the full customer portal. Um, and so they are, they are different. Okay. And is that payment portal an extra cost on the subscription? If you have, if you have the customer portal today, then it is not an extra cost. If you just need the basic payments portal, then yes, there is an additional cost. I, I'm um, Igor, our um, you know one of our senior ISV um, uh, solutions architect did a webinar a couple weeks ago specifically about the different types of payment portals, and um, he talked about the cost being about half of the customer portal. I don't know what what it is exactly, um, Courtney, but but uh, your account managers would be able to look that up. If, yes, if so, if... so just to answer the question again, two two different portals. If you have the customer portal today, you you've got that functionality already. If you just need the basic Acumatica payments portal, then it is an additional cost that you would need to add. Yeah, that, that's a great way to answer it. And if you know you want to learn more um, about the difference between those different portals, just let us know that you want to be followed up with in the follow-up survey, and we'll have someone reach out that can talk through all those options with you. Um, another question we've got come in was, you know, how does the transition um, from Auth.net to Acumatic Payments work with open pre-auth? you um, you'll want to close open pre-auths before um, fully transitioning to um, you know before shutting anything down or fully transitioning so you could um, you could run those or or you can reauthorize those through acumatic payments that's that's another option but if you do have outstanding orders or invoices on authorized.net it's recommended to, to close those out prior to fully switching over. Or, you know, closing, you know, closing them, deleting them, voiding them, and then rerunning them through Acumatica payments. Okay. Um, does Acumatica payment support QR code payment? Hmm, that's a great question. <laughs> We've got we've got really great questions today. They're trying to stump you, Jeff. That's a great question. I I you know I'm I'm gonna have to follow up. I I want to say yes, but um, I, let's let's follow up with a with a product person on that one. 
Perfect. I'll, so if that was I'll your question. We'll, yeah, we'll look into it and we'll follow up with you um, just to make yeah. sure we get you the 100% the right answer. Okay. I look yeah, right I now. Say, looks like we, I, Mm -hmm. I want to say we can, you know, we can do QR codes on the invoices. Um, but anyway, let's follow up. Well, <laughs> I won't uh, worry about it right now. <laughs> okay. Well, looks like we've got two more questions um, before okay. closing up. So, you know, last chance if you want to get another question answered. Um, this question is, Regarding surcharging, you mentioned that it is available now with the customization package. Could you give me more details on the customization part um, as we are trying to avoid customizations and maintain simplicity as much as possible? So I, I'm not sure I can answer that super well. Um, because I don't fully know what's entailed with the, with the customization, um, except that it, um, it is a, um, you know, a, a light application that has to be installed and then enabled in Acumatica. Um, I've, I've seen it, I've seen it done and installed um, for different customers. And um, I, I know that it, it works not just the surcharging customization, but other customizations as well. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to follow up with you. I do have the, the install package. If you want to, to install it in a test environment, we can assist you with that as well. Um, so um, sorry, I can't, not super equipped to answer that one, but um, I'm happy to follow up with you and, and get the right person to help answer that. Yes, and if that's your question, you know, we definitely want to make sure your reps um, a part of that and someone that really deeply knows your system and your setup um, yeah. to kind of get to kind of help you understand how that works within everything else that you've got implemented as is. Okay, and a couple, a couple more to go. So okay. um, this person wants to confirm that if they stay um, on 2024 R1 version, that after April 2025, they could still use authorize.net. That's correct. Yes. And I think, you know, that is correct. But, you know, there is that second piece that, you know, that prevents you, you won't be able to use future upgrades after that. So, you know, as new versions are released, you're kind of that still will be a barrier um, to moving on to that next Acumatica version and getting those new features. Yep. Yeah, so you can stay past April, you know, if you need to extend it to later in the year, um, you do have that option just anytime before you upgrade to 2025 R1 or, or even R2, if you wait after a while, you, you've got to have a plan to replace authorize.net. Okay, and our final question uh, before we wrap things up is, um, we are a global supplier, so we do a lot of international business. Um, this, they're asking, you know, when does Acumatica expect to accept, roll out the acceptance of international card? Um, they do not use authorized.net, so they'll need something. Um, they'll need to, they'll be in need of something, and they want to know if Acumatica supports Visser Merchant Services, Clover, um, and that's a processing provider that their bank can help them with right now. So a bit of complexity to that question. Um, I'm not sure how much we're, you know, it's kind of on the Acumatica side, less on Acumatica payment side, but I think in, in general, they're kind of wondering about um, acceptance of international cards and, you know, Acumatica support for different providers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I fully understand the question. So you can accept cards from anywhere in the world, essentially. Um, there are some countries that are, are restricted, um, but, but you, you know, for the most part, you can accept payments from anywhere. If you have, um, if you have a presence where, you, you know, you've got an office in Belgium or a location in Belgium where you need to take payments there in, in that currency, then that is not something that is supported today. So if that's the question um, where you've got, you need to process in that specific foreign currency, we don't have that today. 
um, and I don't have a time frame. I know it is on the roadmap and we're looking at different options, um, but I don't know which countries or, or when that's going to be. And Jeff, can you tell me what currencies are currently supported? Is that just um, U.S. or? U.S. and Canada. So Canadian dollar um, and a lot of Canadian businesses process both U.S. dollar and Canadian currency, and we can support that method as well. So U.S. dollar and Canadian dollar today. Okay. But, but and you if can that was... accept payments from anywhere in the world. It's just, it's just processed and funded to those two currency types. That makes sense. So, and if that was your question, we would love to dive deeper into all aspects of it um, and really, you know, make sure we have the right people to kind of answer those intricacies there and, you know, figure out um, what we can do. So that is, you know, conclusion of our Q and A. Um, we just want to say a quick thank you and show you uh, where you can reach out for more information. So um, you can always find all of our resources, information at swktech.com. And you can always reach us at info at swktech.com, um, webinar related webinars at swktech.com. And, you know, we are always sharing this kind of content and future webinars on our social media channels. So thank you all for asking a lot of great questions and being a really engaged audience um, and spending a little bit of your time with us today. So we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you, Jeff, for a super informative presentation. Thank you, Courtney. I had a lot of fun. Thanks, everyone.